I'm going to give it a few minutes. I'm gonna upgrade Katie here. Okay. Okay, thanks everybody for joining. As you come in here, we'd love to hear where you're dialing in from. So um, drop in the chat where you're located or where you're calling in from. And we will get started here in just a minute or two. Dan, are you in Seattle right now? I am back in beautiful Seattle, yes. Was, uh, was down in Vegas with you guys and came back to actually sunshine. It was unreal. So I'll take it. The last two times I've been in Seattle, it's been pretty sunny. So it's been nice. Yeah, we're getting a late start with the whole sun thing. Normally it's pretty nice in May and June and we're 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 heating up though. Oh yeah. <laughs> we got Ashland, Oregon, such a beautiful place. Catispell. Portland, Oregon. I think we got a few people from Portland, Oregon. Uh, what's up, Scott Davis? Good to see you here, brother. Thanks, Katie, for helping out with uh, letting people. Oh, actually, I think people just joined now. I forget we have our ambassador calls that are, you have to like let people in, but um, on a webinar, you don't. So. Unfortunately, we won't see everybody's faces, but um, would love for you guys to be active in the chat. Um, we are just so excited to have Dan here, and I think it's going to be a really great conversation. So definitely, um, you know, jump in with your questions or thoughts as we get going. And uh, we will be posting this to our YouTube channel as well as the Mortgage Coach um, YouTube channel. So thanks, Dave, for sharing the this with your audience. Um, and I think we'll go ahead and get, get started. So um, so to kick us off, Dan, thank you so much for being here. Um, I, we're framing the conversation um, as an ambassador, as well as you being a top 1% mortgage professional in the country, um, someone who's very passionate about financial literacy um, and a former coach and college professor. Uh, we, I, I think this could be a really fun conversation around uh, you know, how we educate the next generation and how we talk about um, not just financial literacy or home buying, but um, but really like what home buyer, what you're doing to reach home buyers through education. So um, got some some different directions we'll take it, but we'll start with an introduction. Dave, um, thanks so much for being here, the co-host on the call. Yeah, no, it's good to be here. I'm excited about it. And I I think what makes this this impact series that we're doing at First Home IQ so unique is that there's there's more audiences. Usually when we're creating content, it's exclusively for mortgage and real estate professionals. But I, I do believe the content we're creating, it will touch teachers, it'll touch parents. And then we'll also be looking for clips that we can take out of this conversation and, and actually build into the First Home IQ educational platform. So I, I see a lot of familiar names. Um, some of you are already ambassadors of First Home IQ. So if like there's a question you want to ask Dan that would help you uh, have influence with the teacher, or maybe you want to ask Dan, like, Dan, if you had to give a, a class to a, a college, you know, college freshmen's or college seniors, what would you do? Um, put those in chat because I think it's it's kind of a unique call that we can speak to so many audiences at one time. Yeah, and I know we will be creating a playbook or at least one out of this conversation. So definitely want it to be really practical um, as to, uh, there's a multiple different directions, but as to how you're educating Dan in, in your community. So um so to kick us off, we'd love to hear you share a little bit about your background and um, and especially as it relates to um, you know your experience as a coach and college professor and how that maybe has shaped the way that you um, educate as a mortgage professional today. Yeah, so the the whole coach and college professor thing is you know when I was going to college. Um, I picked the easiest degree because I was just a knucklehead, you guys. So I thought I was going to make millions playing in the major leagues as a major league baseball player. I was in college on a college baseball scholarship. Didn't really apply myself in high school, you know, um, 
the whole adage of, I think I may have coined the phrase C's get degrees. I don't know. I was, I, if I didn't coin it, I was a huge advocate of it, right? Back in when I was young and I had one thing on my mind and that was baseball. And uh, I know two things when I got to college, I knew that I never had a great baseball coach. Number one, I was uh, one of those kids that, that just had cruddy baseball coaches. They just kind of coached because of their kids. And even when they got to the select level or even the college level, they just kind of just phoned it in, right? They just, it was a job to them. It wasn't a passion. And um, so as I, as I exited college, um, education was one of the easier degrees to get. So I got a degree in education and, um, and I kind of got interested in, I got really good at baseball. Like I peaked my senior year in college too late. Okay. And it was because of strength and conditioning coach, a strength and conditioning coach in Iowa sat me down and he said, I see you in the weight room twice a day, all the time. And he goes, I'm a little bit concerned. He goes, why aren't you bigger? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know why I'm not bigger. Um, that's a good question. I feel like I'm getting stronger. And so he, he ran me through a series of strength and conditioning strength tests. And he goes, you're not that strong. Number one, number two, he was like, um, you should be bigger for the amount of work you're putting in. And, uh, he goes, what do you eat? And I said, I, what do you mean? What do I eat? And he goes, what do you eat throughout a day? And I said, I don't really know. And he goes, cool. Here's a notebook, take it home. And he goes, I want you to write down what you eat, everything that goes into your mouth for the next three days. And he goes, I want you to bring this back to me. So I listened to him and um, he basically that following week sat me down and uh, basically pre-diagnosed me for having anorexia, an eating disorder. He was like, dude, you have an eating disorder. And I said, no, I don't. I was like, I'm totally fine. And um, long story short, you guys, I had battled weight problems as a kid, um, and even in through high school. And once I got into college, I learned how to work out. I learned how to eat or not eat. And I started, I could control my weight. Well, that strength and conditioning coach changed my life. He is one of the main reasons why I am in mortgage finance, why I had the confidence to get out of coaching college baseball and being a college professor and jumping right in to mortgage finance in 2008. And um, so you ask, how does education, how did baseball and coaching how does that tie into me being a, a mortgage leader? I want to be like Coach Bill, that strength and conditioning coach. I want to change people's lives. That little extra conversation that he had with me about nutrition had nothing to do with strength and conditioning, but it had everything to do with strength and conditioning. Because I know Dave knows this. We've talked about Jack and our kids. You could work out all you want in the weight room. You could be the hardest worker in the weight room, but if you're not fueling that machine, if you're not fueling that body, you're not going to see the results. And I believe that can tie right into what we do as mortgage professionals. Um, we've heard it said before, you know, the the, the wrong rate um, can end up costing, or the wrong loan program can, with the wrong rate can end up costing you hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so it's just more than weight training. It's more than just a mortgage. And so that has helped kind of um, mold me into uh, being a mortgage professional and an educator. Now, going back um, to my degree, guys, I want, because I want this to end a little bit better than me just being a knucklehead that sees to get degrees. Coach Bill changed my life my junior and senior year in college, became an all American baseball player my senior year. And at that point, when I knew that Major League Baseball, signing a multi-million dollar uh, Major League Baseball contract was off the table, um, I wanted to be Coach Bill. But in order to be a professional strength and conditioning coach at the Division I or pro level, you had to have a master's degree to get the designation that they have, uh, the CSCS certification. So I'm like, oh, crap, I have to get a master's degree. How am I going to do this? Um, so I applied to three different universities. Uh, actually applied to five and three out of the five said no. And the University of Idaho and Eastern Washington University said yes. And so I played, I played hardball. I told Eastern Washington University, I said, Hey, I'll come and get my master's degree with you guys. You have a great sports medicine program, but I want my grad assistantship at Gonzaga because they have one of the top baseball programs in Washington state. They negotiated, got me my grad assistantship job. 
and I went to graduate school at Eastern Washington University, graduated in two in less than two years with a master's degree. In fact, a year and a half with a 398 GPA. Ooh. So I take all of that stuff and I'm even teaching this to my son right now. When you get fired up about something, you can you can achieve anything. And that's that was it. That was me. One guy helped change my life. And it was because he went a little bit further. He talked a little bit more than just a mortgage, talked about finances and talked about financial literacy in our language, right, you guys? So um, that's kind of helped frame who I am today. Incredible that you go from C's get degrees to being someone who I see as a, I mean, you're a huge proponent of education. Like when I think of your business model, it's so driven by education. Um, and that's such a big part of your personal mission. Um, so I, I wonder if you could, and of course, what you went through around changing your nutrition and eating habits and all of that, it's such a big mindset shift. Um, how do you guide people through making those kinds of mindset shifts in, you know, in these drastic ways that you've made people, home buyers today have big changes they need to make around their mindset around financial literacy. And so I'm curious how you guide people through that mindset change. Yeah, I got to see it firsthand, you guys. I, D Savage and I have talked about this before. I think as a mortgage coach, um, we're not just coaching X's and O's. You have to understand that your players are going to have bad days. Your players are going to have off days. Your players are going to have life happen to them and get down in the dumps and maybe have an injury. <clears throat> and I learned this firsthand as a college baseball coach that the great ones, uh, the great foot, the college coaches of all time, Nick Saban's, the Dabos, the the Jay Johnson's head baseball coach, friend of mine at LSU, um, they understand people and they understand what gets individual people fired up, right? How to get the most out of those people and those kids. And so I think the best mortgage coaches, just like the best coaches, they are very, very great X's and O teachers. They're great, um, you know, they're innovative on the field. But what they do off the field is what changes the lives of all of their players. And so I think having seen that in athletes, it's the same thing that that we see in first time home buyers that we see when I go and speak at high schools and colleges. Um, and someone may ask, hey, how do you go sit, stand in front of a room of high school kids? It's the worst thing. I'm going to tell you this right now. It's the worst. I don't like it. I really don't like it because they don't like it. They don't want to hear from me. It's sixth period. They got one thing on their mind and it's TikTok and Snapchat. It's not listening to some guest speaker, right? And so I don't go in there and talk about X's and O's. You know what I go in there and talk about? The fact that you are going to want me in five years. You don't want me now. In five years, you're going to be like, where's this mortgage guy? Where's this guy? And so I start off my talks going, I want you to put this in your phone. I want you to follow me on Instagram because I think Instagram will be around in five years. But I want you to know where you can find me in five years because you're going to need me. I promise you, you're going to want to learn how to land a job. You're going to want to learn how to compete for a job. You're going to want to learn how to save up money. You're going to want to learn how to buy that nice car, that first house. Or you're going to want to learn how to have a couple of additional skills that's going to help you win that partner, right? And so I kind of start by that, going back to the coach. We're not here to coach necessarily X's and O's. We have to assume that first-time homebuyers have a down payment. They have a credit score. They, <clears throat> they have a budget. Sometimes they need coaching. Why is now a good time to buy? In comes mortgage coach, total cost analysis, rent versus own, five-year net worth analysis. Okay, this is the coach. The coach is there to inspire, to motivate, to sell that dream versus, hey, I need you to run these plays and get good at running these plays. Hey, I want to jump in on a couple of things if you've listened to this. And I, I think a lot of the people that are going to be attracted to this interview with Dan are trans formational leaders. Like you, you are the crew that really believes in creating a transformational experience for someone. Uh, but I, I all, th I all think we can, we can lean into that superpower a little deeper, by the way, Dan, I never knew that story. Sees get degrees. And, uh, I mean, I did know that you got your master's, but that was super cool to hear how, and then to hear that story of just how one coach that cared and, and that coach stepped into constructive tension, like to really have transformational leadership, you need to step into some hard conversations with people with, with love. So I think, you know, 
that's just a reminder to folks. And then here in this first home IQ community, you know, we call this impact interviews for a reason because we want to interv interview high impact people. And then we want to do that in a way where you, they can have, you can have more impact. So um, be sure to put questions, like whether you're watching this in YouTube, if you've got questions, we do have a live audience right now. So guys, be sure to put any questions you want for Dan. But uh, I, I, that's an impact story, bro. And um, it was really powerful. Yeah. yeah. And getting into impact, I, I would love to hear really practical advice. Like you do it so much education on social media, speaking of Instagram. And I know you have a, what is that, your money, um, making sense of your market video updates, which I love. Um, and you do some cool events. I would love for you to kind of break down a little bit of your strategy around how you're delivering education on an ongoing basis. Um, and then maybe we could, um, you know, ask some questions from there. Yeah, I think things happen to us as professionals and individually that that kind of help mold and, and frame and change our lives. And so I'll go back to November of 2016. November of 2016. Um, I'm up here in Seattle. So Seattle is a very politically tense uh, uh, environment, area, right? Region. And we know what November of 2016 was, right? It was uh, President Obama was coming out of office and, and did an incredible job for our industry. And I think he was very well liked. Well, his terms were up and it looked like it was going to be Hillary Clinton or uh, Trump, right? So I do homebuyer classes every single month. Um, I started doing homebuyer classes in 2012 next to Amazon on Terry Avenue in Seattle. And we started doing them for Amazon employees. I had a couple of Amazon employees. I was like, hey, come out and have a beer and learn how to buy a house, right? Beers and home buying. And we had built that class to 30, 40, 50 attendees a month. And so I always start our home buyer classes with this. You know, everyone's got a, a drink and, you know, they're getting their seats and we had a, we had a packed house. It was packed. And um, I could just feel it was a little weird. It was a little off, right? Not as many people were talkative or it's just a little different. So I, I go around the room and I say, Hey, um, Hey, as we get started tonight, we do have a slide deck. We do have an agenda that we cover. We've been doing this for a long time. Um, but we always start off with, you know, Hey, let's just go around the room and not everyone has to speak, but what's one thing you really want to gather from tonight's class. And normally it's credit, you know, Chris, and it's credit score, down payment, um, budgeting, you know, PMI, things like that, right? And it was, is now a good time to buy? What is the market going to do if, if, if Hillary gets elected or Trump? It was, you know, it was just, it was all political. And so I had Christian Nossum, the real estate agent that I do these with, kind of continue going around the room. And I'm in the back, just Googling uh, equities, market S&P 500 during election years, housing markets during election years, and um, housing when a, when a Democrat goes to Republican or Republican goes to Democrat, you know, changing of the color, right? And I'm finding everything that I knew in the back of my mind, but I wanted to validate it with, with Google. And we got to the very end. And, and I said, listen, these are uncertain times and you guys are younger. And so this is scary. And this is a big, this is the largest financial decision you guys are about ready to embark on. But I will tell you from years of experience, mentors that I've had that are well, way more wealthier than me and way more wise than me, that I would never base a financial decision off of fear. You guys are all, you're scared. You're scared to death right now because you don't know. Now I have friends that ride motorcycles. I don't like motorcycles. I don't ride motorcycles. I'm scared to ride a motorcycle because I don't want to die. There's nothing there protecting me, right? But they're not scared because they've rode motorcycles all their lives. And I use that analogy. Um, they don't, they're not fearful to get on their motorcycle. Okay. I am because I don't know how to operate that machine, the roadways, the rules, all of that. My goal tonight is to help you guys better understand that buying a home should not be based off of who's in the office and what's happening politically, because I will show you what has happened in the past. And boy, you guys, if we could have recorded that, was I right or was I right? Like, go look at the housing market from 2016 to 2020, 2020 to 2024. How much money would you have left on the table? And that's really what I said. How much money are you willing to leave on, on the table 
because of fear or a lack of information. So I tell you guys this story because at the end of that home buyer class that night, making sense of your markets was born. And for and I committed to these kids, these these young home buyers. I said I will make a video every single Friday. Now I did it for about three years consistently, every single Friday. I mean, Jenny and I would be on vacation. I'd be like, hold on, babe, I got to do a quick. Make, I got to look up rate watch. I got to see what Dan Rawwich is saying. I got to see what's going on. I got to make my short video because I talked about mortgages. I gave a, a mortgage or real estate tip. And then I closed it with something like maybe a quote or, or, or whatever, about three or four minutes. Did it for about three years consistently. And then um, started to taper off that a little bit. That's since 2016. That's how making sense of your markets was made because these people these first time home buyers, these young, young, these guys are working at Amazon and they're making good money. Um, they were confused. They were scared. And if I could do a little to help mitigate that, that was going to be my job. And that's how it was born. I love that, Dan. Hey, I, I want to ask you a question. I, I interviewed Gina Myers yesterday and she recently um, did a, a uh, financial literacy class with high school seniors. Uh, and Kristen actually helped her, by the way, Kristen, she was just raving at how helpful everything you gave her was. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I was asking her and this, by the way, this will be in the mortgage coach YouTube channel any day now. So highly recommend you check it out. Uh, she was talking about how she's winning with realtors in this market. She was talk, she shared some of how she, um, delivered an experience for high school seniors. And I, one of the things she did is she did role-playing with them. She kind of gave them profiles that, hey, you're a FedEx pilot, your income's this, your credit's this. And, and then she, you know, showed them what they would qualify for. Um, she also mentioned that she used the rent versus own throughout a, a high school senior lesson. So with all that said, if you parachute into, and you pick it, high school senior, could be college, you pick the class, but I want you to tell us right now the age of the class and just give them an outline. Like if you had to prepare and go deliver, first of all, what grade level do you want to go teach at? If you had it, if we, if you got to pick. So I can answer that question because of experience, because I've, I've, as an affiliate professor at the university of Washington um, for three years, I got to speak to juniors and seniors in their business department. It was a, uh, an elective. And then in their real estate school, it was a prerequisite, right? So I like juniors and seniors in college, you guys, because I have their attention. And mm -hmm. that's why I never coached high school baseball. They're just yahoos. They're knuckleheads like me. I liked college baseball because those guys were driven. They want to go to the pros and that, that's their number one focus. I want to get drafted, right? And I'm here getting a degree. So you have an opportunity to influence. I think you have their attention. You have a platform and a stage. So to answer your question, Dave, I would I would choose college juniors or seniors or college age kids in general. Okay, and then and then let's say seniors. Let's just go with seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan, you're you know, I, you're, give me your outline mm -hmm. of your class. You got an hour class with these kids. You're you're gonna you're gonna go in there as a first home IQ ambassador. Mm -hmm. Give us give us the outline and the agenda of what you're gonna deliver and some of your teaching goals. Yeah. So I'll give you the pre first home IQ ambassador. Um, if, if I, prior to me coming on board with you guys, um, I would do it differently today. I would have them all take the first home IQ quiz test, right? Um, they get to see what they know, what they don't know. Um, what I've learned from working with college age kids is they are, um, they don't have people like us as their professors. OK, they that's the reason why the University of Washington brings me in. They, they bring me in to teach out of a textbook, but they want me to teach the real life lessons from the textbook. And what I do a little bit extra is I give these kids hope. Nobody is inspiring these kids to tell them that they can make it, that they can. Uh, they think that millionaires and wealthy people are people that that strike gold being an entrepreneur, or they work 30 or 40 years as a physician or a lawyer and become partner, um, or they, they, you know, they get lucky and start a business and it takes off. Um, but I can tell you this, and this is how, this is also how I start every single homebuyer class. 
I have talked with very, very wealthy people. I've talked with people that are just getting started financially. And I can tell you that relative to their finances, they want three things out of life. And I learned this from Dave Savage about five or six years ago, and I've used it ever since. I have I've learned that people want to be debt-free. I've learned that people want to be debt-free and own their home free and clear at one point in their life. And I know for a fact that when you're in your 70s and your 80s, you want to retire well off. You want to retire without fear and worry about money, okay? I've never met someone that said, I'm fine with being broke in a retirement home, okay? And so if I know that and I have the roadmap, I've been down the roadmap or been down that road um, and I understand crystal clear on how to attain all three of those things without having to make millions of dollars a year. Would you be interested in learning more about that? And every single first time home buyer says yes. And every single kid that I talk to says yes, because their college professors are just, they're equipping them to go get a job and to work 48 or 50 hours a week at an entry level job. And they're not giving them hope on that they can be wealthy. They can create wealth. And here's how you do it. They all want it. So they want to learn how to invest. I get a lot of questions on investing. You know, a lot of questions on buying real estate. I encourage every single one of them. You got to have a job. You want to have a job. You want to get a job. So get a job. But you should be focused on buying a home as fast as you can. If you can't do it on your own, do it with a family member or do it with a friend and get just get into the game. You can't win if you're not in the game. And so I try to teach them on how to house hack, how to use other people's money. The government um, has down payment assistance programs and all that. And then here's the hack. I did an Instagram video about four years ago on this. It's one minute or less on how to retire and how to become a multimillionaire and retire by owning real estate. And it's legal and Fannie Mae allows you to do this, but you buy a home, owner occupied, you live in it for one year and you go do it again. And you do that until you have six to 10 homes and you'll never have to worry about money ever again. You know, and I play a video at all my home buyer classes of Warren Buffett. It's a recent Warren Buffett interview. And he says essentially in a nutshell, two things. Number one, if you could do it all over again, this guy's arguably the wealthiest man in America. And he, he created his wealth in the stock market. And he created his wealth by owning businesses. And he said, if I could do it all over again, you know what I'd do? I would have bought 200,000 single family homes. I would have hired a property management company to manage them. And I would have created my wealth in a fraction of the time. And so I play that video. The other thing he says is the reason why I'm a huge advocate of a 30-year fixed rate mortgage is it's the only way to legally short the U.S. dollar. Think of it this way. You go to a bank, you give them a very, very, very small down payment, and you get this huge asset, this $500,000 asset that can appreciate at seven plus percent a year, but you only had to put down this much money and pay this much money every single month. And all they want from you is a little interest payment. They don't want a piece of the pie when you go to sell it one day. They don't want, and we've heard Sean talk about this. This is an unbelievable thing. But here's the deal. You go to the bank and you, you negotiate this relationship or you get this relationship with a bank to purchase a home. And let's say two years from now, mortgage rates drop. You can go to the bank and say, hey, I know I'm paying you $3,000 a month, but now I'm only going to pay you $2,500 a month. And the bank's going to be like, no problem, sir. <laughs> and then two or three years later, mortgage rates go up to 8% and your payment stays the same. It doesn't move. And then three or four more later, the economy turns, and they drop a little bit more and you can save $300 more a month and you can rework the terms again. And so getting people getting to hear Warren Buffett talk like that um, about using a 30-year fixed rate mortgage, about investing into real estate um, is just gold because I never had that. I had to, I, I'm so blessed that I got into the mortgage industry and got to be around Dave and all the people that Dave Savage introduced me to through the mortgage coach community um, to then learn about investing and learn about how powerful a mortgage is, how powerful owning real estate is. And what I have realized, and the reason why I'm passionate about this and why I was so excited to come on board with First Home IQ is that I have realized, you guys, that this is not being taught to our high school kids. It's not being taught to our college kids. It's not being taught out there in mainstream America. And I believe it's up to us to change that. Wow, man, there was so much gold in that that master class you just delivered. So I just want to make sure I heard this and and then also just give everybody a, a checklist. Uh, he's going to have them take the, the quiz. 
are you going to do that in class? Like, you know, are you going to, is that the first thing you're going to do? Or are you going to tell a story first? Well, I would, I would definitely tell a story first. You okay, know, so he's going to tell a story first, create some hope. Yeah. Uh, and then in live in the class, like, hey, everybody take the test. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, and I yeah. like that. Uh, maybe get, you know, see who got the highest score, you know, kind of find out what people missed, what they got right. Um, and then and then when do you play the Warren Buffett video and how long is it? Oh, the Warren Buffett video is 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 less than than two minutes. And what I'll do is I'll just throw it into if this is in Facebook or whatever, I'll send it to you guys. Um, I just played as an MP4 because um, I just screen recorded. But I think I want to say at most it's a, a minute, minute and a half. Now, I, I tell me if you agree with this. I think it would be cool if you were an ambassador out there doing it. You had that on your own LinkedIn or on your own social yeah. and you literally pulled it up because, you know, you yeah. want these kids to follow us. You want their parents to follow you. And yeah. so you literally, you know, you play it from your own social media somewhere. Uh, you you gave them your your if you're first home IQ ambassador, you've got your link. I would, you know, tell them to share that with other friends. I'd have them share it with their family members. Uh, what what else am I missing on the if agenda? You, yeah, if you will. You don't mind, I'll just share my screen real quick. It's just a Word document. Go and for it. This is kind of the handout. Do I go over every single every single one of these bullet points? No, but this is my high school and my college. Um, just kind of my financial fundamental outline. Okay. Um, so this is the key. This, so this has the answers, but the ones that they get on their desk does not have the answers. So I have them just try to fill it out. What's the best investment tool to build wealth? I love this because we get to have a conversation. Some will say gold, some will say crypto, some will say, you know, the S&P 500, some will say real estate. I get to gauge the room. This is one that we, this is why I start with this one because we get to go around the room and I've never had one person say the correct answer and it's you, it's you, you invest in you. I'm not sitting here today talking with you guys and I'm not a top 1% loan officer in America if I didn't double down on Dan Keller, okay? And so it's you, Um I think uh, number two, what is compound interest? I talk about that interest. It's interest on top of interest. It's how rich get richer. Um, the rule of 72. Uh, I talk about how important a survival number is. What is a survival number? Um, and I teach that. I teach the 50, 30, 20 rule and how to flip that. Okay. Um, and the only way to flip the 50, 30, 20 rule is by having a personal budget and, and filling that out every single month and understanding where all your money's going. Ultimately, you want 50% of your income going into investments, not being used for survival. And um, the wealthiest people I know, they're the, and, I, and I teach them too, by running my personal family budget, the best month that I've ever had, I had, get this, you guys, it was, uh, I had flipped that 50, 30, 20 rule to seven, 80, excuse me, 83% of the money that I made in that particular month went into investing. So completely flipped it. That's what happens when you're debt free. That's what happens when you live within your means, but you don't know that if you don't track your money. So I talk about that. Um, uh, talk about <laughs> money that you earn in the interest in a savings account. Um, so the importance of investing, uh, we talk about inflation. So I ask questions so that I can then teach them about inflation. How do you beat inflation? What is the rate of return on real estate? What is the rate of the return on the S&P 500 index over the last 30 to 50 years? Specifically, what is the rate of return in real estate in Snohomish and King County? Um, what is a mortgage? What are the benefits of a 30-year versus a 15-year? Um, best pieces of advice you'd, get, you'd give to a first-time home buyer. Um, when is the best time to buy a home? How much should you should you should you save? Five components of your credit score. So, you guys, there's a lot of little things in here about a lot. You can see it's kind of leaning toward real estate, but um, it's also them getting very very clear on you got to make your money work. Um, I say this all the time. My number one goal is to get my money to double. How can I take a dollar and turn it into two? And that should be your mindset. And if it is, especially at 20 to 21 years of age, you're going to be just fine. This is so incredible. I'm like trying not to explode over here. Thank you so much for sharing that. I feel like that's a, I mean, it's so practical and something everyone can, you know, really take right away and, and teach a class. And I, you know, I'll share my screen for a second just to show 
everybody, um, we have a lot of ambassadors on the call and everybody has access to all of these presentations. There's a couple of free ones also in the, in the community under education materials, but, um, but, you know, I, I think when we've created a bunch of presentations um, that are for people to do a first time homebuyer presentation, but that's not the key to really educating people. It's truly going through that and having a conversation. And um, what I love what you talked about starting out those conversations, Dan, is like, is you're hooking people with why does this matter to me? Yeah. And, and, you know, that first question we have some questions in our first intro class that's like why is money important to you what are your goals and and connecting the dots to this is what matters to me but i think starting out with that question about investing in you that is that like really i mean it got me excited i'm like yeah that of course that's and for me who even though i've devoted my career to financial literacy I, it's hard for me to connect the dots like i am not i, I don't have your brain around that you know and i I think, um, so anyway, I love that. Um, I did want to just show Dan's um, first home IQ uh, quiz page for anybody who is an ambassador. As a reminder, if they take that quiz, you get emailed their name, email, and results. So it's a great way to build your database as well. Um, but also just, you know, we have a lot of ambassadors who talk about the um, how when you start out those presentations with things that build the conversation, like getting, you know, getting your score, it eases people's anxiety about participating in a conversation that often feels very overwhelming. And I also love, Dan, what you've talked about around easing the fear and anxiety, like saying, yeah, this is an uncertain time. Yes, this is, you know, very scary for you. And let's talk that through. And I think giving people language to be able to have those conversations and connecting it to themselves is huge. So anyway, I could go on and so, on, but save your thoughts. Yeah. So a couple thoughts. So first of all, Dan is going to share that, that video. And I, I have a feeling we might take that video and put it into the, the first home IQ channel somewhere. Uh, I would push anyone listening to this. If you are a financial literacy leader in the mortgage space, you have it on your own social media page. Um, you know, that, that checklist that Dan created like he authored that so he owns that well we will have an original version of that like we'll take what dan did we'll have that but i would push everybody have your own you know something that connects it's in the sequence that connects to your heart in your authentic way it's it's the things you're comfortable in teaching the things you want to teach but i would push everybody to like dan just shared an incredible road you know playbook like here's the dan keller uh college junior or senior playbook we'll have this in our platform and but i would i would just push everybody make your own one one last ask dan this is for you and this is also for anyone on the call are there other one minute two minute three minute videos that you use in a teaching situation and also anyone in this community if there's some other you know teaching tools other videos like this warren buffett one that you use we we would love to know about them like we would love to build a library of content like that but dan anything else that's kind of a go-to uh clip that you would use while teaching any any kids on financial literacy yeah my, my only other one that i use is just a, a rent versus own tca and and i don't play a video i just because i'm there live and i kind of walk through it in in a minute or less but it's that five-year net worth. It's it's just the importance of leverage where you can leverage, you can buy a home with zero down or 3% down. And that $500,000 home, you guys, that vehicle, it's still going to go up in value. Whereas if you took that 5% down, for example, or excuse me, 3% down, let's say it's $15,000 and you put that $15,000 in the S&P 500 index, it's got to work harder for that to go up in value versus real estate. And so I just show them that they, ki kids and even first time homebuyers, young adults don't get that. For some reason, they just don't understand that. And so um, understanding the, the value of real estate, why Warren Buffett says that, that, that if I could do it all over again, I would buy 200,000 single family homes. I just, it's a no brainer. Um, but I do teach, you can't see behind me, but this thing right here, this is a pie chart. It's, it's, I got that from my coach. It's called the wealth accumulator. I got this. I learned this back in 2014. It's four quadrants, you guys. And it's the, it's the, and I can post a, an image of it, 
but it's four things that you need to have to create wealth. Number one, you want to have a rainy day uh, fund, a savings account. Um, number two, you want to buy real estate. You need to buy real estate, owner-occupied real estate. Number three, if you work for an employer and they have a 401k uh, match, you need to invest in your 401k. And you need to max that out if you can every single year. And then number four, the, the, the big one, anything left over needs to go into the stock market or real estate. And you just repeat that. And if you lived your financial life by those simple rules, um, you will be wealthy at one point in your life. And so I, I teach that to youngsters. I teach that to every first time home buyer gets a link. Every client in general gets a link to mybudgetwithdan.com. Um, if you don't mind, I'll share this. And this is a gift for you guys. I made this form and you guys can copy it, copy and paste it. Anyone listening, I give this to every single one of my clients, okay? Okay. And I tell people this, that my job, I am not a financial planner and I'm not going to give you financial advice. My job, however, is financial awareness. Okay. I am very financially aware in my life and I want to, and I want to give you the gift of a financial awareness test that, that, that changed my life. So I teach my clients to take this 15 question quiz. Okay. And the goal is every six months to one year turn a no into a yes. Turn one no into a yes. And of no, I'm 48. Am I 15 out of 15? No, I'm not, but I'm getting there. And the goal is that when you're 60, when you're knocking on the door of retirement, that you are looking at 15 out of 15 yeses. And so um, I, I show this and I teach this to my clients. Guys, what this does, I'm going to come back here real quick. By the way, we are stealing that, brother. Just so I can see Kristen's face, like the financial people. awareness so test. Come on now. It's so good. It's so, and and the feedback I get from it is, wow, thank you so much. Like this is, this is a roadmap. This is exactly what people need. It's awareness. And the cool thing is, is like, I don't have to go into the, in the ditch or the trenches on this and try to talk about stuff that I'm not gifted enough to talk about. Like I, I'm not a financial planner. Here's the other thing. I tell everyone this, and this is kind of how I explain this form. Let's say I give, and I have given my financial planner that manages my money a um, million dollars. Okay. He's not looking necessarily at my W-2s, my tax returns, my bank statements, my pay stubs, my, my overall, what I'm doing every single month. He just cares about the million dollars, right? And most financial planners are like that. Their job is to invest that million dollars, right? Invest that money. The other thing I say is my financial planner never gave me that questionnaire. I made that questionnaire up from influenced by one of my mentors, okay? And so you have to understand the, the financial standard in America and the standard in the mortgage industry is so low, it's up to us to get this information in front of our clients. And so I give this to our clients saying, and I use that example, that my financial planner has did not even give me this. And so it's really important though that I can take this questionnaire that you fill out and I can find the gaps and I'm connected to financial planners, CPAs, estate attorneys, real estate agents, contractors, life coaches, if you will. I'm a big advocate of relationship and communication management. Like one of the most costly mistakes you'll ever make is build your wealth, get to 50 years of age, and then get a divorce and have to give half of it away, right? And so the, I have the circle of wealth. And then recently I've added marriage counseling and, and relationship skills because I'm, I'm a knucklehead. I'm guilty of that. I'm a dude. Um, most men don't communicate really well. So I'm an advocate for men. Go and get some counseling on how to communicate and how to be in a relationship and win in a relationship. And so talking about stuff like this, you guys, no mortgage guy or gal's doing that. And so when we do this, we've now separated ourselves. There's value there. And then now I can work, I can come in alongside them and help recommend and refer and then be that, that advocate for awareness. Hey, when I do a follow-up call, it's not like I'm just checking in. Hey, last time we talked, we talked about that financial awareness question. Or, hey, did you take a, a no? I'm curious, have you, have you turned a no into a yes yet? Way better conversation than how's the house? Right. So, so much gold. I want to make sure a couple people landed on a couple things. One, 
the the idea that every time you're doing a financial literacy training, you do have a, a rent versus own, and you you show people the the five year net worth, or I think Sean Herrero shows three years. I know loan officers that show five and ten, uh, but at the end of the day, you 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 own it, and that is a really important teaching tool for anyone listening to this. I love that financial awareness uh, test that you give. Guys, all of this will be in the First Home IQ um, platform. And 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 I just want to remind everybody, like this, this ambassador program that we have is designed so that you can you can be behind this purpose of being a financial literacy first responder in the marketplace. And 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 you can do that and get into high schools, colleges, get to kids as young as they can. But I hope everybody's connecting connecting the dots that you can close more loans and you can sell more homes if you are this not a loan officer, you're this mortgage advisor, you're this financial awareness advocate, like like Dan Keller. You're you're gonna you're gonna have more purpose, you're gonna deliver more profits. Well, Kristen, I mean, this has been pretty incredible. I don't know. Do we go a full hour? Do we have another 15 minutes with Dan or we do where are we have at? another 15 minutes. I had planned on cutting it early because I always like to leave a few minutes, but I did want to just cover briefly the these money milestones because um, I think your feedback on this would be awesome if you don't mind um, for just a couple more minutes. Um, so we have the money milestones that we have around our mission with First Home IQ which we believe that by the age of 16, as you are learning to drive, you're getting set out into the world, you could get a job, that you should have a basic understanding of saving, investing, and budgeting. By the age of 18... Whoa, 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 Kristen, could we, yeah. could we go back to that, Dan? Yeah. And I would love your opinion on this. I, I've, I really like the Acorn app. And, and I think, uh, are you familiar with the Acorn app? Yeah. I mean, not only does it teach savings not only does it have investing it's also got a lot of learning tools what are your thoughts on recommending that app or are there anything else that you would add to this you know milestones at 16 yeah first off i've heard you guys talk about these milestones before and i think they're genius if if and when i do go back into the high school uh, air, uh arena and talk about financial literacy i will use these i think it's i think it's gold um, because it gives a 16 to 18 year old an idea of where they're going and what they should know. It's it's genius. You guys doing this. Um, same thing, Dave. I agree with that app. Um, I try to I, there's a couple of apps I, I've given that one. I tell uh, kids they need to be focused on their credit score. So I like my It teaches them about credit. Um, it helps them better understand how to build credit. So I personally recommend my FICO. <clears throat> um, and then as far as like savings and investing. They don't. They don't, may not necessarily have parents that'll take them down to their local bank. And um, I know that Jenny and I, my wife and I, bank at Chase Bank, and we had a um, a rep down at Chase Bank offer to sit down with um, our kids and I and and help them open up an account, help walk them through some basic, really simple ledger type stuff. Money in your account, money goes out, how to track it. Chase has an app too. Um, and so I would say, Hey, you know, if, if you do have parents that support that talk to your local bank or credit union and try to sit down with someone you're they're, you're paying them and that's what they're paid to do. So Kristen, I, I love that, that every, every kid has a bank and goes and sits down because I, I also bank at Chase and, and that app is killer. I mean, there's mm -hmm. a, a lot of value in these banking apps and I think just about every one of them has it. Uh, if if you're an ambassador and there's some other apps or tools that you think are 16 year old appropriate, let us know. We want to build out a toolkit for that. All right, Kristen, sorry for pausing on 16. I just wanted to unpack that a little bit. No, I'm so glad you did. Um, and I love this idea of adding tools in here. So we also have a budget um, it's a spreadsheet, but it, it helps you. It has the 50, 30, 20 rule in there. It has some different things that allow you to work within that. So I'll add that into the slide as well. So 18, old enough to vote, get a credit card. You're getting offered student loans. Um, you should have a basic understanding of how debt works and how your credit score is going to impact your life. So my FICO, you know, all of these tools, I think would um, fit well at this point as well. Um, hey, real, real quick on that one. So um, 
obviously, I think um, the Mike FICO score goes here as well, Dan. Uh, I also know um, most banks now have a credit score feature within the app that I think we should lean into. Uh, Experian has an app. Um, I actually have the Experian membership, so I kind of like know my credit score on all the different, um, you know, I think there's three different credit scores. So Experian has an app. Any other credit resources, Dan, that you think we should be um, proactively teaching and advocating for 18 year olds? I think the biggest thing is don't, and this is what I teach, don't wait until you need a credit score to try to go get a credit score. This is why I like talking with youngsters about it and and tips for getting a credit score um, before you need it. Um, you know, everyone's everyone's different. Some kids are more mature and and they are, and they don't have the support of family like some other kids do um, as a co-signer for a car or things like that. So it's uh, like with most things in life. I try to teach this to to adults. The best time to look for a new job. Um, is while you have a job, right? So make sure your LinkedIn is dialed in at all times, right? Make sure you're building yourself and and uh, your social medias are up to par. So same thing with credit. Um, you don't wait until you need credit to have credit. Mm, Love it. So good. Um, and I'll put the links to these types of things in the masterclass as we post this. Um, but this is, you know, our example of the budget worksheet uh, where you can incorporate, you know, teach through that. And then we also have a bunch of videos that we've created that are related to these subjects. So, you know, if, as anyone is kind of piecing together where, where they, you know, if they have kids or whatever, where they're teaching these milestones, um, we can offer that. So, and then by the age of 21, this is when people should understand the power of real estate appreciation with a mortgage. So we're getting into the, that college level kind of class. Um, so as you get, you're getting set off into the world, this is, you know, the, the big milestone around homeownership. So, um, anything else that, that you want to share around tools and resources or, you know, or milestones that we might be missing here? I don't think the miles, there's anything missing with milestones. I think that kids are not being taught how to make money. And, and I think that's the biggest thing. You look at both of my kids. I have Allie. My daughter's graduating from high school next week and my son's 15. Um, my Huddy, my son, spring break two months ago, the kid made $3,200 on spring break with a buddy. Like manufacture. I know people that don't make 3,200 bucks in a week, right? And he went out, it was his week off and they went out and created a flyer and they detailed cars. They got dad bought the supplies. So I got, I got to teach him a little about, Hey, you got 300 of that $3,200 has come back to me, but got to, they're te I'm teaching them how to make money. And, and if you can learn how to manufacture money and then again, get that money to double, um, you're going to be just fine. They're not teaching that in college. They're teaching you to go get a job and work for someone and, and make someone else rich versus, and there's nothing wrong with having a job and working for people. I'm a huge advocate for that. And, and doing really well and working up. But I think if you can do that plus, um, there's no excuses. You can't make excuses anymore about not having enough money or not having the whatever you want. Hey, hey, hey Dan, I would love to get your feedback on this before we run out of time. You know, Kristen and I recently did a workshop with Sean Herrero. We've actually done two of them. And the, the most recent one with Sean will be posted. I think it's actually getting posted in our YouTube channel today. But there's these, you know, five essential lessons to building wealth with real estate. And, and they're also like money milestones, like understanding real estate appreciation, understanding compound interest, understanding how to prepay debt. I, when I first created this list as someone who has trained loan officers, I always started with, you got to give people options. You got to show them the cost over time. But when we did this workshop, it really became clear that like, hey, when we're teaching college students or first time home buyers, we should, you know, these, these are more like means to an end, mm -hmm. you know, showing the options, showing the cost over time. That's how we teach this. So two questions. One, do you agree in the order of these? Or if you were going to teach it, would you would would this be number one? Uh, what order, what sequence would you teach these lessons in if you were 
talking to first time home buyers or you were teaching at different classes. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I wouldn't change a thing. You have the the perfect order because here's what you're doing. You're selling the dream. You're selling the dream, which is the three things people want in life. What's the third one? They want to retire well off. This is how you're going to retire well off by understanding real estate appreciation, compound interest, all of that. So beautifully written, dude. That's well, perfect. I mean, it was a collaborative experience that Kristen, mm-hmm. myself, and Sean did. Uh, if you're watching this right now and you're a first home IQ ambassador, you should watch that interview. We'll put a link down below. But I, I you know, like my closing thought that I'm going to hand it to Kristen is if you want to be a great ambassador, you need to be a great teacher. And and the and 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 the beauty of this is if you become a great teacher of these things to high school and college age kids, you know what? You're going to be an even better teacher to 30 year olds, 40 year olds, move up buyers like purpose and profits. Uh, hopefully everyone watching this is an ambassador. If you're not, there'll be a link to become an ambassador somewhere where you're watching this. You go to First Home IQ and become an ambassador if you're not already one. So Kristen, back to you. This has been an incredible conversation. Uh, yeah, there's. I'm. that was a perfect closing thought. I am just so appreciative, Dan, of you sharing so much of your wisdom and practical advice. There's so much um, that we're going to be able to share with the community and So, yeah, I think, you know, a couple takeaways, just the way that you validated fears and anxieties with the first time homebuyer, I think is really crucial. It builds trust. And then moving into education with engagement um, is, you know, I I love the the process. And again, appreciative of you sharing that with us today. So, yeah, it's been my pleasure, you guys. Great community. And I think just from some of the things you've shown, there's so many resources that all of us, I mean, I wish I had this hub that you've built 10 years ago when I was really starting to get interested in financial literacy. But um, I'll leave you guys with this. And I, and I, t- I teach this to every single client, every single first time home buyer, just like Dave did right there. Real estate appreciation at the top. Wealth creation needs to be at the top. And it's on that financial awareness questionnaire down at the very bottom that the government society, the world is going to teach you that retirement is an age. Retirement is not an age. Retirement is a number. And so do you know your number? How do you know your number? And are you working in the right direction to get to that number before you're 70, before you're 80? And there are ways to fast track getting you to that number. And real estate is one of the easiest and fastest ways to crush that number. Boom. Thank you, Dan. You're amazing. Appreciate you, everyone tuning in and, uh, you know, just leaning into this mission that we're on. Super grateful for everyone. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.